fleeing voter is one who leaves the voting booth without completing the voting process. The voter gets his smart card and inserts it in the edge. The voter makes his choices. The voter may or may not check the displayed summary. The voter leaves the voting booth. The poll operator notices that the voter left the booth but did not complete the process. The poll worker manually sets a switch to enable him to cast a fleeing voter's ballot. If the fleeing voter chose James Gray for his United States Senator vote, then the malicious firmware changes the choice to candidate X and casts the ballot. Since a poll worker does not see the fleeing voter's choices, he is not aware of the change. The fourth scenario is a fake fleeing voter. The voter gets his smart card and inserts it in the edge. The voter makes his choices. The voter checks a displayed summary, which is accurate. The voter checks the paper tape and again everything is accurate. The voter accepts the vote and it appears to be recorded. The voter assumes this is normal and leaves the voting booth. After a short wait, the malicious firmware prints voided on the paper tape and displays a summary with candidate X as a choice for United States Senator. The poll operator notices that the voter left the booth but did not return his smart card. The poll worker checks the booth and because the card is still there, assumes that this is a fleeing voter. The poll worker manually sets a switch to enable him to cast a fleeing voter's ballot. If the fleeing voter chose James Gray for his United States Senator vote, then the malicious firmware changes the choice to candidate X and casts the ballot. Since a poll worker does not see the fleeing voter's choices, he is not aware of the change. The fifth scenario is an after-the-fact vote. This is similar to the previous scenario. The voter gets his smart card and inserts it in the edge. The voter makes his choices. The voter checks a displayed summary, which is accurate. The voter checks the paper tape and everything is accurate. The voter accepts the vote and it appears to be recorded by the system. The voter assumes this is normal and leaves the voting booth. After a short wait, the malicious firmware prints voided on the paper tape. It then prints and records a summary with candidate X as a choice for United States Senator. The following clips show how useless the security seals are. 
This clip demonstrates how in less than 18 seconds a results cartridge can be removed and replaced by another without disturbing the seal. This clip demonstrates how in less than 8 seconds one can switch the open-close switch without disturbing the security seal. This clip demonstrates how easy it is to remove the screws holding the bottom of the AVC edge to get complete access to the firmware. There are approximately six screws that need to be removed. The Optec 400C is used for optically scanning and tabulating MarkSense ballots. The PC that contains the software for operating the 400C is protected from physical access by locking it behind a metal door. The lock used is a hard to pick lock whose keys use special blanks that are tightly controlled. The latch that actually holds the door closed is secured to the back of the lock with a single Phillips head screw. By removing a large piece of sheet metal that forms the hopper where the counted ballots are collected, one can directly access the back of the lock. To remove the sheet metal, approximately 16 standard Phillips head screws must first be removed. This takes several minutes. After the screws are removed, it takes less than 40 seconds to remove the sheet metal and unscrew and remove the latch on the back of the lock. 